Note the swelling overlying the A1 pulley of the middle finger patient can actively extend the finger indicating a grade 2 trigger. Two provocative tests have been described for trigger finger. They are useful in patients with pre-triggering with pain over the A1 pulley and or subjective catching but no trigger on examination or patients with trigger when they wake up in the morning but resolves as the day progresses. The first test was proposed by Baffus and Froemson from the Cleveland Clinic, Ohio. The patient is asked to make a tight clenched fist three times and relax after each effort, while the examiner holds the fingers closed. After the third contraction, the patient is asked to slowly extend all fingers. At this point the involved finger will usually trigger or lock confirming the diagnosis. The second test is the Lennox Independent Flexion Test described by Politsk et al. from the Lennox Hill Hospital, New York. The patient is asked to make a tight full fist without including the thumb. Then the patient is asked to extend the unaffected fingers first in a sequential manner and the affected finger last. Any trigger becomes apparent. Persistent trigger of index after A1 pulley release of index, middle, and ring finger. Trigger persisting after excision of ulnar slip of flexor digit orum superficialis. Trigger resolved after extension of incision and release of A3 pulley. Palmer view showing snapping extensor tendon on dorsum metacarpophalangeal joint of left small finger. Dorsal view showing the same snapping or pseudo triggering. Palmer view showing snapping lateral band over the proximal interphalangeal joint of the left index finger. Dorsal view showing the snapping or pseudo triggering of proximal interphalangeal joint of the left index finger. Lateral view showing the swan neck deformity and the pseudo triggering. Note the sudden extension as the lateral band clears the proximal phalangeal condyle. 